Hey there guys, how's it going? So, for those of you who don't know, uh, Commonwealth light welterweight champion Josh Taylor is going to be facing former IBF lightweight champion Miguel Vasquez. Now, I think this is a very interesting fight. Uh, I think it's um, pretty much the logical next step for Josh Taylor because obviously after his uh, big victory against O'Hara Davis where he pretty much exceeded expectations. I mean, the fight was supposed to be 50-50 and Josh Taylor completely blew O'Hara Davis away and took him apart. So, obviously that kind of set him apart. I think facing a former world champion with so much experience, I think it's the logical next step for Taylor. And uh, I'm glad he's taken a fight like this. I think it's a real step in the right direction. And, um, yeah, because this fight will tell us a lot about Josh Taylor. Now, I've been saying for a long time that I think that Josh Taylor is one of the best fighters in the UK. And if he can really do a number on a guy like Miguel Vasquez, who was a world champion for a long time and has never been stopped and has so much experience, uh, if he can do a number on, on Miguel Vasquez and get the stoppage, then obviously that's going to be very impressive. And nobody will have any doubt about Josh Taylor's ability to, be, to go on to become a world champion. Now, I want to talk about Miguel Vasquez for a bit. Now, Miguel Vasquez is a fighter who I've always rated very highly. However, I've never really been that interested in him because, to be perfectly honest, He's not an entertaining fighter, as, as good as he is and as technically sound as he is. He's just not a fighter that's really intrigued me. Um, the one fight I can remember of Miguel Vasquez, and I've seen a lot of his fights, but the one fight that I can remember as being somewhat exciting was his uh, his fight against Breedis Prescott. I remember at the time Breedis Prescott was, uh, was quite... You know, they, they had quite a lot of hype around Prescott because of his upset knockout victory over Amir Khan. And uh, Prescott was seen as a, as one of these real dangerous punchers, a guy who could really upset the apple cart and, um, you know, could get you out of there with one shot. And uh, he actually dropped Miguel Vasquez in the first round. I think it was just a, a flash knockdown, but he was able to score a knockdown. And uh, Miguel Vasquez got up and out box bred his Prescott and won the fight pretty clearly. It was a, a split decision, but... I think I can remember watching the fight. I'm pretty sure Miguel Vasquez dominated the fight. And I'm pretty sure that putting the first round aside, it was a, a pretty clear victory for Miguel Vasquez. And uh, like I said, Bredis Prescott was highly regarded at the time. So that was quite a good accomplishment. Um, he had, I believe, seven defenses of his world title. Uh, that was the IBF lightweight title. And uh, he lost his title in a highly controversial decision against uh, a contender called Mickey Bay. Um, the majority of people, including myself, felt that, Mag that Miguel Vasquez won that fight pretty clearly. Uh, he never got the decision. It was a, a pretty bad fight and it was a pretty lackluster fight, but I, th I felt that the champion deserved to keep his title and uh, yeah, he never got the decision. So um, since that, he hasn't really done much. I believe he's lost a fight since then. He he's had a bunch of victories, but he's also lost a fight to someone I've never heard of. And um, yeah, I think it's safe to say that he's pretty much on the, um, you know, coming towards the end of his career. Uh, he, he has had a very good resume in terms of the people he's fought. I mean, he's fought people like Timothy Bradley. Uh, I believe uh, earlier in his career, he also fought Saul Alvarez. So, you know, the guy's been around. He's fought, he's fought a lot of um, really decent competition in his career. And although he hasn't really uh, excelled at the highest level, you know, he's a former world champion, brings tons of experience. He's never been stopped before, so he's obviously durable and very responsible defensively. And this fight really will tell us a lot about Josh Taylor and where he's at. Now, um, like I said, Josh Taylor exceeded everybody's expectations with the with the victory over O'Hara Davis. It wasn't a, about the fact that he beat O'Hara Davis. It was about the fact that he beat O'Hara Davis in such such special fashion. You know, it was it was spectacular to be honest. I mean, the way he took him apart you know, pivots and really taking him out to the body with those hooks and uppercuts, uh, making O'Hara Davis throw himself off balance and just really clowning the guy. I mean, it was quite embarrassing when you consider all the trash that O'Hara Davis talked in the build-up to that fight and even before then, uh, ju just how outclassed he was and outgunned he was against Josh Taylor. It was fantastic to watch. It really was. Uh, uh, I watched the fight live on Channel 5. It was in my hometown, Glasgow, so yeah, I enjoyed that fight. Um, and this one's going to be interesting. This fight's going to be in Edinburgh. Uh, Josh Taylor's actually from Edinburgh, so he's going to have the, the home advantage here. 
And um, yeah, Miguel Vasquez, I'm not sure if he's ever fought in the UK before. I don't think he has. I remember several years ago there was talks of him coming over to face Ricky Burns. That never happened. But I, th- I think Miguel Vasquez, I don't think it's going to be an issue for him traveling because the guy's very experienced, like I said before. Um, who do I think is going to win the fight? I think it's pretty obvious that I think Josh Taylor's going to win because although I do rate Miguel Vasquez, I think that Josh Taylor, to me, he just has such natural talent. You know, he has the kind of gifts and the kind of talents that you can't teach a fighter. I mean, like I said before, I've been saying a long time that I think he's one of the best, not only one of the best prospects in the UK, but I'm so confident that I would go as far as to say that I think he's one of the best fighters in the UK. Uh, I think he would beat Ricky Burns. I think he would beat Anthony Crawler. Uh, Those guys are having a big fight in in, uh, about a month or something like that. They're they're, going to be fighting in Manchester. Uh, I would take Josh Taylor over either of those guys. Um, I think he's a better fighter than Carl Frampton. I think he has uh, more skills and more technical ability than Anthony Joshua does and uh, than Billy Joe Saunders does. So uh, although he isn't a world champion yet, I don't think it's premature to say that he's one of the best fighters in the country just based on what I see, you know, based on the eye test. I think that Josh Taylor has an amazing amount of skill uh, and I think that he's going to beat Miguel Vasquez and I think he's going to do so comfortably. But what I'm not sure about, and it's just because... Just because of Miguel Vasquez's track record of, of going the distance in fights, I'm not sure if Josh Taylor will get the stoppage. It's certainly possible, you know, because of the way that Josh Taylor gets inside, you know, switches his stance, pivots, and, you know, really works in those hooks and uppercuts to the body. He can really uh, overwhelm an opponent. And um, I'm, I'm not so sure if he can do that to Miguel Vasquez, though, because Miguel Vasquez is just so experienced. He's fought at this level so many times before. And... Uh, one thing that Josh Taylor probably will have as an, as an advantage is the fact that the fights are like welterweight. And although Miguel Vasquez has fought as high as welterweight in his career, I believe, he's more, you know, he's more comfortable fighting at lightweight based on what I've seen. And, and all his best wins were at lightweight. So I think this may be, a, he may be out of his depth here facing a top level like welterweight. And um, let's just say if, if Josh Taylor beats Miguel Vasquez and if he beats Miguel Vasquez comfortably, I would like to see him fighting for a world title next. And I don't think there's really any reason to to hang about. I think he's got that amount of talent. I mean, uh, Terence Crawford recently has um, expressed interest in moving up in weight. And that means that he'll be vacating his titles. And um, yeah, I think that Josh Taylor could definitely pick up one of those belts. I really do. Um, I mean, if he were to fight Terence Crawford now, I think that's a little bit too much of a of a... A step up in class. I mean, uh, Terence Crawford is certainly leagues above O'Hara Davis. Um, but Josh Taylor's got the talent. He really has. And if you give him another couple of years of um, developing his style and whatnot and developing his attributes and his ability, I, I think he could give Terence Crawford a run for his money. I really do. I mean, I, I would take I would take Josh Taylor today over Victor Postal. Um, I would probably even take him over... Um, What's the guy's name? Julius Ndongo. I, I think Josh Taylor has better skills than Julius Ndongo does. So, um, yeah, I really am I really am uh, impressed by this guy. And I think he is going to beat Miguel Vasquez. It just, it just depends on whether or not he can um, overwhelm Vasquez. Because Vasquez is very technical, very awkward, uh, very difficult to, to get out of there. You know, it's very difficult to get rid of a guy like that in the ring. So... Be interesting to see if it gets the stoppage. Uh, Let me know what you guys think anyway, and thanks for watching.